Hey folks, Dave here. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Uh, we're going to make a multi-layered haunted house. And I couldn't find a an SVG online that I, I liked to do this with, so we'll just make one. So go up and grab a square and just drag it out to a rectangle. Make it look something like that. Click your arrow. Don't worry about size right now because we'll readjust it uh, as we go. Okay, so now we want to put a top on it that will allow us to put a widow's wall, like a little fence on top. So we can't use a traditional uh, gable roof, so we're going to make something. So go over to uh, hexagon, click the hexagon, push shift, drag it out, look something like that. Click your arrow, and then go up to window, go down and make sure that shape properties is selected. And then you'll notice off to the right, you have a shape properties tab. So you can change this one to five to give us a pentagon. And then you can go up to a range and click vertical flip. Now we're just going to put that on top. Go to the corner, stretch it out, so it looks something like that. And then you can click Shift, select your rectangle, and then go up to Vertical Alignment and click that. And line it up, and then go over to the left to Weld, and click Weld. And now we have that. Okay, so we want the overall height. Uh, of these first pieces to be about five inches. The fence will take us to five and a half or so. Uh, but we'll do, we'll make this five. So go up top and change your height. Leave, make sure your lock is off. Change your height to 127. And that's in millimeters. And select again and make your width about 70. Okay, we have that. So now we need to uh, duplicate that. Drag it off to the side. Go to the corner. Drag it down to where the roof fits underneath the other roof. And then you want to... Now remember you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. You can push down on the mouse wheel to move the entire canvas around. And then you want to just bring that over so you can weld it together. But before you weld it, after you resize it, duplicate it once more and drag that over to the side. Then you can select your little house, shift, select your big house, and then select weld. And now we have that. So now we want to do the same thing on this side. So just drag it over, line it up, make sure it touches good. Then select your big house and go over and select it. So now we have this. So we are going to make three of these. So just Right click, duplicate, and then right click and duplicate. Okay, so these will set on top of each other. So this first one will be our uh, backdrop. So we want to put something in here that will show through on the backdrop. So let's go out, and we're using free vectors. And I'll put uh, links to those in the description so you can go out and get them. So let's go over and just pull in. I uh, think I decided on this spider web for that. And if you wanted to, it's going to be kind of small, but you could put 2023 in here. But we will... In the end, we will put one here. So, 
this will show through if we put it right in here somewhere and make it small enough and it'll just go right there and if you'll select uh, probably a little smaller if you'll put it where you want it like right in there and then shift select your house you can hit vertical align and it'll move it uh, more to the center and I'm going to use a, a score for that, but it's not a deep score. It's uh, a little lighter because there's a lot of stuff going on in that. And a regular score might just uh, take too long. Or... So we'll just go with that. Okay, so these now need to be cut out. In fact, I didn't need to make this one yet. I'm going to delete that. I'm leaving my mistakes in here, folks, because I believe it it helps everybody to see them. So we'll just leave them in there. Okay, so go over and grab square again. And then we want to put it right in here. And just drag it down. Don't go all the way to the bottom because we want to leave a little bit of wood on the bottom. This is going to be our cutout. So make that a cut and then shift, select your house. Nope. Control Z. Always remember to click this arrow up here or it won't select. So now I selected, shift, select the house and do vertical center. Okay. So we could just group this in here, but we're not going to do that. I want to make sure. Uh, sometimes you can group if it's just one or two things, and of course it will cut everything out. But we're going to come across here with another square to open this area up. So we're going to subtract this one from this one. And when you do that, you have to select the one you're subtracting from first, then shift select the other one then go over to the left to subtract and subtract subtract then you can go up and click preview and it's over on another screen let me grab it and you can see that we have our hole exactly where we want it okay so now we want to grab square again and then come across like so anywhere in there is fine and then again we want to leave enough wood on the bottom that it doesn't uh, break easily so then you can shift select your house vertical center and there we go so now you want to select the house first shift select our square go over to the left and select subtract then you can check preview and there you go that's what we have so when we set this and if i didn't make this high enough we'll fix it we want to be able to see our spider web so what i've got to do is just make sure this is not grouped so we ungroup it, and then we can just move the spider web down to where we know it will be visible. And then as you're doing these things, just keep checking your work as you go, and you won't get to the end and realize you've made a mistake that you can't really correct because now you're chopping wood. Okay, so now we can, in fact, we're not going to group yet because if we make adjustments the adjustments will take on the score so it's best just to wait and group at the last minute and just remember what you're doing as you go okay so now uh we can copy this one so we're going to duplicate this one now 
and pull it down. And this is the one that our widow's walk will go on top of right here. Okay, so let's make that. So we want to grab a square and just drag out a fence slat like so. Click your arrow, then go over, grab your hexagon, push shift, drag it out, click your arrow, and then go back to your shape properties and make this three to turn it into a triangle. We're just going to put a little fence, a little arrow on top of our fence slat, something like so. And then you can shift, select, go up top to vertical alignment, and then go over and click weld. And now we have a fence slat. So to duplicate that, uh, we're going to select it. We're going to go to the left and click Array. This spacing here is the space between the slats. It's set for two millimeters, which should be fine. And then up top here, you can change the number of columns, the X columns. Let me get this out of the way. And you can put as many as you would like. I think we'll do about five. Click OK. Now we want to tie these together. Uh, to do that, just grab another square. And then all you need to do is touch the pieces like so. Drop that. Click your arrow to select. Then shift. Select all of your other slats. And then click weld. And there you go. We have a fence, which will become a widow's wall. So we'll make it small enough to fit on top of here. And we'll just drop it down so it don't. That works good. But before you weld it, then duplicate it twice more. One for here. And one for here. And we're just going to resize those to fit. So this one you can select. Shift. Select your house. And click weld. And there you go. That looks pretty good. And I usually duplicate too soon. I could have just not duplicated that. Wait till I get this one resized to where I want it. And that looks pretty good. Then duplicate and move it over to the other side, but don't let it touch yet because you've got to weld this one and it can only deal with the two objects at a time when you're welding. So select your house, then weld, then select your other fence, bring it down to about the same height, select your house, shift select, and then click well. So now we have our outer layer with the widow's wall, I'm trying to get this in the screen. And then when it lays on top, you will see the widow's wall as well as the uh, spider web that we've added in there. So now, uh, on this outer one, we're going to add a staircase. Okay, so let's go get a staircase. And we are going to flip it the other way. So you can go up to a range, flip horizontal, and now it's facing this way. Grab the corner resize it and we're just going to have an old witch approaching the staircase here. 
So there we go. So put that in place, maybe a little smaller. I don't know where the staircase is leading to. Maybe she has, uh, makes a turn at the top of the stairs and does something else. Okay, select your stairs, shift, select your house. And I believe we've got to do union this time. Yep, so I'm going to go uh, control Z to back up. You need union because two points are touching. It should have done that with the, uh, I guess it was considered one point with the, the fence slats. But the union is here on the, the second one. Click, and there you go. So now we have a staircase. So now, uh, I believe we will go ahead and put a witch here on this center one. And the center one will have a tab so it can set up. And we will glue all these together, one on top of the e each other, one, two, three. And then we'll have a tab here, and it'll set down in the stand that we're going to make. All right, so let's go get a witch. We're going to put her in here, make her a little smaller, and we will see how she sizes up with the stairs and exactly where she needs to be by pulling one layer on top of the other. So she is right there at the staircase, so that's pretty good. All right, so we want to do an outline on. So go over to the left and do outline. Uh, you can leave it at 0.5 or make it one, whatever. Let's try one, see how that looks. Yep, so whatever works for you, do that. Then pull out your original. Then select your outline, right click, and ungroup. And then you can get rid of these imperfections that are here. This, you can click on, right click, delete, and then that's all one piece. So now we want to take this one piece here, put it back where we thought it needed to be, and that's what we will weld in. And then we'll put the old witch on top of it. Uh, we picked her up. So let's make sure she's still in a good spot. And she is. And then we can. This may also be a union. You'll find it. So which shift select your house. And union. And it is. It works. We're good. All right. So now. We can take our witch, select her, and make her a score. And she is a regular score, which is a little more power than the, the green one, because there was so much going on with that. And we have another piece. We're going to try to put a, a jack-o'-lantern down here. And I think it's just... It'd just be too much to use this score on it. Okay, so now we have the witch. And again, we're not uh, grouping the, the scores in with everything else in case we change something. Because if we do, it changes the entire thing to a score and then you just have to back up. All right, so now let's, uh, let's find a spider and put a spider in here that will be on top of the spider web. And there are some spiders in there, but we're gonna make one that we weld to the corner up here. So, okay, let's go get a spider. And we're gonna do kind of the same thing we've done with the witch. We're gonna get 
an outline. Let's size this up. Turn it in a direction that will work. Something like that and just have them hanging off. Okay, so we will pull her out, do an outline, click OK, then pull out our original, bring this piece over, and then shift, select your house, and we're going to hit Control Z and back up. And then we are going to hit shift, select the house, and we're going to do union. Okay, so now, at least we know where to put the spider. And I'm going to ungroup this real quick. Not that it matters, but there's a little speck there. And you can choose to leave these or not leave them. And now it shouldn't need grouping. Okay, so let's put the spider in her spot right there. And we'll use this lighter score for that as well. Okay, we're getting there, folks. So now we will go get a jack-o'-lantern and put it in. And see that jack-o'-lantern's got a whole lot going on. And we need to uh, lessen that up a little bit. But it's a pretty good jack o' lantern, so I didn't want to not use it. Okay, so let's do an outline. So go over and do an outline here. Leave it at one. Okay, now pull the original out. And we're going to use the lighter score on the jack o' lantern. And then we're going to add a square on the bottom of the jack-o'-lantern. Don't forget to click your arrow. And we'll just kind of put it somewhere right here. Click cut. Then select your jack-o'-lantern outline. And then click weld. There you go. So that gives us somewhere to write Happy Halloween 2023. And that's what we're going to do. So go grab your text tool and click out and pick whatever font you like. It's going to be kind of small anyway. And then remember to select arrow, and then you can resize. And I th think I've got a font called Mortified Drill. And I can put a link to that into the description. Uh, somewhere in here. Let's try that. That looks pretty good. All right. So I will put that in the description so you can use it. It uh, comes from defont.com. So now we need to resize. We'll put that off to the side. We need to put our pumpkin face back in. So now we can just grab that entire piece and resize it. It's going to be pretty small, but it's, it's, it's going to work. So, let's bring this back up. Just resize it to something you like. And you just make sure it's touching top and bottom here in the front. And it shouldn't obscure anything else we're doing. Then grab your original, pull it out of the way, select your outline, uh, shift, select your house, 
and then do you. Huh? Hmm? That ain't it. That didn't work. Let's find out what's wrong. Something's in the way. It may be this spider. Oh, yeah, something's not right. It's probably because I ungrouped because of the spider. All right, all right, that's okay. We'll get by this. We're going to select that outline without selecting the spider. Then we're going to shift, select the house. And then we're going to group that. So it must have been this piece right here that, that threw it off. So now it needs to be grouped in with that piece. Select you know, something. Now we can group all that together. So Weld and Union has to deal with two pieces. So let's try it again. We'll select our outline on the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern, shift, select everything else. And these pieces here may be causing a problem, these center pieces here, but we'll find out. So we're going to hit, we'll try Union first. Ah, we're good. Sweet. All right. So now it looks like these pieces are not grouped in. But that's okay. We will get them there. I don't want to group that spider in. But we're okay. We're good. So now grab your pumpkin head. Bring it back over. Put it in. We can go grab our Happy Halloween. Resize it and make it fit on our little placard here. And we will make it the darker score. And now we can group everything. No more adjustments. So you can select everything, right click, and group. Now we have one piece. And do the same thing here. Group. And the same thing here. And group. And nope, shouldn't have done this one. We got to put a tab on it. Mm. So we will ungroup this one. Y'all bear with me, folks. We'll get there. We are almost there. So grab a square, drag it out, and we're going to make that click your arrow, make it a cut, and you can grab edge and snap it up and you notice it didn't snap all the way I don't think but we'll, we'll find out okay so select it then shift select the rest of your house select vertical and it moves it for you and you can select it shift select everything else and then click weld Okay, we're good. Uh, and that was, I'm just going to check the size. So I'm hitting Control Z. I'm going to check the size and make sure I didn't make it too long. So 60 with a height of 6. We want to make the height 3. I make mistakes all day long, folks. So y'all hang with me and we will fix them together. So now you can select it again. And notice your cursor changes to the line. And then you can just snap it up like so. Then select your house. And then click weld. So now we're good. Okay, we're going to make a tab uh, slot that will be adjusted for curve. 
So we're using uh, three millimeter plywood. Uh, so of course this tab will cut out or this, uh, yeah, the tab will cut out with a thickness of three millimeter. We're gonna make the thickness of the slot uh, 2.5 and that'll give it a little tighter cut. So now we can actually group this and we're good. Okay, so let's move this over out of the way. Matter of fact, it is the tallest one, so it needs to be. I'm trying to get this out of one sheet of plywood. I was doing a lot of these, you know, try to save as much as we can. So that gets uh, side by itself. And now we can try to make us a stand that will fit on there with it. So just grab a square, drag out a stand, however big you would like, click your arrow, and then you can go down on the left and click radius. And you'll be able to click these corners and round them off. And that looks a lot neater. So don't forget to click your arrow. Now we're going to put a slot. And just grab another square. We know it needs a height, in this case, of at least 60. Drag it out, click your arrow. So we'll make the height 62. And we're going to make the width 2.5. And we're going to select it. We're going to shift. We're going to select the stand. And then we're going to hit the balls. And then we are going to group it together. And folks, that is it. So now, uh, we need to cut this out and see what it looks like. So let me get set up in the laser bed and I'll come back and do a frame and hit start to send this over and we'll get it cut out and see what it looks like. Okay, folks, be back shortly. Okay, folks, to make this fit on one 12 by 12 sheet of three millimeter plywood, I reduced the width of the house to 130 millimeters and reduced the length of the stand to 150 millimeters. Other than that, everything else is the same. So let's cut this out, see what it looks like.
Okay, folks, well, that looks pretty sweet just laying there. So one thing I want to mention is when you set your palettes for cut, score, engrave, uh, be sure to leave cut on the bottom. I didn't do that in the video. I checked it before I started uh, cutting. Uh, but always be sure to do that and make your cut last. Okay, let me get this put together and uh, we'll get a closer look at it. Okay, folks, well, here's our finished project. It turned out pretty good. This font we used, probably not the best one for something that small, but I'll still put it in the description so you can use it if you want to. Uh, maybe an aerial or an aerial black would work better. So remember to put the tab on your centerpiece and then make the slot slightly smaller for a curve adjustment. Uh, so you can go out and get some vectors and maybe add, you could add something on the stairs or throw a ghost in here or a bat or something. Maybe put some, uh, put a score on the roof or make it look like shingles. But uh, just go out and give it a try and have fun with it. I enjoy doing it. And I, I really appreciate you taking time to watch. So uh, y'all just take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you.